Well, cheers, everyone. I've had such a great week cutting my heart out since the last video. Basically, everything you've seen on this image I've catted in one week. Last week I had this module, uh, the flywheel module, in kind of five working days. I finished the design of the whole thing and I'm really, really happy. So in today's video, I wanna go through with you what this power input module should do for the Marble Machine 3. We have a brake pedal, we have a gas pedal, we have a wine table, a lot of features, as you can tell. As you can see, I've actually added some coverings, some panels. I hate panels. I think they look ugly, but it's for safety. It's also kind of ugly to have to world tour without some of my body parts. <laughs> Basically, this is what how it looked before. But as you can tell, this wouldn't work because the wine would fall onto the floor, <laughs> right? Why could my body parts be ripped off by this design? Well... It is because of this fantastically heavy flywheel. The reason for this, the this existence of this whole module is one thing only. It is to give a perfect rotation output of this shaft here on the right side of the module. And we have the same shaft here on the left side of the module. As you have seen in my earlier videos, I have managed to design a marble gate that can drop marbles with zero millisecond standard deviation in timing. So really good timing. But in order for a programming wheel to be tight, we need a revolution to be tight. So what I wanna experiment with this module is that can I press this gas pedal and move this camshaft and have the force go over into this big pulley. The force is then going through this belt into the flywheel. The flywheel, has a high gear ratio, one to eight, which means for every BPM of the music, this flywheel spins eight revolutions. Hopefully that will even out the tempo and make the music tight. So all this is to make the music tight. We also have an emergency brake right here. This is a sort of a torque limiter that I designed myself from scratch with laser cut parts. And if we look at it individually, we can see the pulley mod module a little bit better like this. So there's some magic going on in, 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 in these parts. I'll actually leave a link to this the whole CAD. I'm gonna export my whole CAD model and I put it in the feedback section of the Reddit post this week. So anyone who wants to look at this in CAD, you will be able to download all this CAD. And if you have feedback for me, you can provide feedback in CAD. This purple area here, or it's more pink, will be engaged by marbles here, who sits on this red um, disc. And the red disc can be, the connection between these two modules can be broken. All the parts to the right here are connected mechanically to the shaft. This big pulley is not connected uh, to the shaft. There are two ways that uh, this can happen. One way is if I press this brake pedal. So I press the brake pedal here. I have to press it three centimeters down. Then we'll move this part down. Here you can see kind of better. These six bolts are located in the frame. And when I pull down, here, like straight down, uh, these camshafts will stick out to the right if, if we look at him straight like this and press the disc to the right in your image and they will uh, break this connection. Many of you will say, Martin, 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 why are you doing custom parts? There are off the shelf torque limiters and yes, only problem with off-the-shelf torque limiters is that you can't Google the first website that shows an image of the off-the-shelf torque limiter and then take a JPEG snapshot of that and put it into CAD and that's the torque limiter. To implement a torque limiter for me from off-the-shelf, I'm not so in experienced in that uh, and I'm kind of using tested methods from the Marble Machine X. By adding and removing springs here, we can set the torque limiter stiffness. And I can also, with my brake pedal, this one, I can also manually activate the torque limiter and at the same time brake the machine. So it's just easier for me to design a little bit extra laser cut parts and, and order everything in one go. Probably there are off-the-shelf torque limiters that I could have worked with designing my own. It may sound strange, but where I'm sitting, it's less complicated for me. 
Let me talk about the pedals. I'm really happy because I'm using these uh, small square tubing. So these are 20 millimeter square tubing with two millimeter walls. So these are not so uh, rigid. They are pretty lightweight and not so uh, chunky. And in the brake pedal, where we're not going to like pump it up and down, I've just cut holes in the square tubing with the laser and then I'm just uh, routing them through a bolt because they can pivot on a bolt. We don't need to be any fancier than that. And here's another wonderful point. These bolts are sitting in holes in the frame. So all these holes you can see I've designed this week are laser cut. And you can see how all the pieces are puzzling into each other like this. So all this is laser cut straight into the square tubing. So welding this together is going to be awesome. So for example, the pedals are pivoting on these holes. So uh, the bolts attached to the frame like that and the brake pedal has no bearings or anything, but the gas pedal, which is going dun, 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 one, two, three, four for every BPM of the music. I've actually included uh, some bearings here. These are just moving back and forth. And if you think, this bearing housing is an issue, then you have to <laughs> then then you have to talk to each other about that. This is going to be welded to this. I've only included these holes as a locating feature. Here in the middle, uh, I have strengthened because these walls of this square tubing is only two millimeters lightweight, I have made these strengthening plates in the middle where the force is going to be uh, transferred from the brake and the gas pedal up into the devices. So you can see here and this adjustable link here. And then we have this big meat axe over here. So this is a safety feature as well. If my foot would get under this, with this strong flywheel, my foot will get chopped off. I think the torque limiter needs to be so strong to drive the Holmar Machine 3 that my foot would be severely damaged before the torque limiter tripped. Even when this pedal is in the uppermost position, I can't get my foot under it. So that's why we have um, this little box. But one nice thing I noticed with these plywood parts is that they are actually stiffening up this small uh, thin square tubing because I don't want a lot of weight in this pedal. So this actually have become kind of a torsion box here. So here you can see it uh, from, from inside. This plywood is actually stiffening up the square tubing because I'm going to put my full body weight on this uh, to pedal the machine. So I can just step on the brake, have a sip of wine, and, and uh, move on with the concert. <laughs> the adjustable link. Okay, here we go into some important features of this design. The camshaft position is adjustable. So let me show you the first sketch of the cam. So this is the camshaft. And if you look closely, we have holes around the circle from 35 millimeter, 40, 45, 50, 60, all the way up to 65. The reason I wanna do that is that I wanna try different leverage positions. So the further out from the center, I attach this pivot point, the more leverage I have, the least force I have to put into the pedal to actually power the flywheel, but the more I need to move my leg. So that's maybe not ergonomical. So I'm going to experiment by moving this threaded M12 threaded rod. Uh, right now it's here. For example, if I move it up to here, the pedal is moving more and I have more leverage. But I always want the lowest position of the pedal to line up with the floor. I think that will help me play tight. It's almost like I'm stomping the beat to the music. So in order to be able to move the pivot point up here, but have the lowest point of the pedal always be the same, I have made the link adjustable. So uh, I think you understand how it works. If I move the pivot point further up, I will just detach these two bolts and I will move the below part of the link upwards. I have learned from smart people that you should go for a mechanical fit whenever possible and a friction fit only when nothing else is there. So what I have done uh, now, if I, for example, show you this module and if we isolate the shaft, is that I have lathed in these grooves here. So this is a classic way 
of adding, of securing something sideways to a shaft. So within these grooves, these retaining rings fits. And they are super easy. They just snap in place and nothing basically, they're just held on there like a spring. And in this case, they are holding the shaft to the SQF um, pillow block bearing housings. So now the shaft can't move sideways. But hang on, you already have uh, the, the same feature here. Yes. So uh, this uh, set point is meant to stop the shaft from sliding. That's a friction fit. It would work. You also have these more expensive pillow block housing with when, when the whole sleeve is like clamping around the shaft. I think that would work forever and ever. But these retaining rings are just better safe than sorry. I don't want stuff to be sliding around. And I want to know when I assemble where things should go. Since I need to machine these shafts anyway, it's a simple task to just make uh, make these uh, grooves for machinists and I think the retaining rings is a really uh, good option. So here you can see I have retaining rings outside the bearing housings. Better safe than sorry with this big flywheel. However in here uh, this nut pattern is so close to the shaft so I can't actually fit a retaining ring in there. So what I have done is that I have lathed a groove here. So this disc has as you can see, as a 19 millimeter inside, when it's locked to everything else, this disc will actually lock the whole flywheel to the shaft sideways. I'm really curious to see if I can pedal this shaft tight. If I can pedal this shaft tight, and I'm gonna measure that with a contact microphone and I'm gonna do a lot of computer, man computer measurements. If I can do that, we have the whole circle of tightness of a marble machine, basically. We have the input, or basically the tightness starts here and it ends at the marble gate. Even though it might not always be apparent, there are some method in the madness when, when I'm working. Basically, I've, I've checked if I can drop a marble tight. The next big thing I want to check is if I can rotate a shaft tight. Um, if I can, great. If I can't, I need to take a big think about the whole project. I know that this is the next question I want to ask myself in the project and uh, I'm had, I've am had i been having so much fun this week, I've been in a great spirit, just I had to like drag myself away from CAD to do other things, I've just been CADing, 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 CADing and I think this kind of works. So yeah, I think uh, that's an introduction to the whole bloody thing. I'm going to start ordering the parts next week, but I will keep an eye out on Reddit. So if you have some last minute feedback for me before I'm editing all these parts, go to the pinned comment and download the CAD file and um, reply with your feedback to the post where we post this video on, on the Reddit page. Link is also in the description and in the pinned comments. And uh, yeah, just let me know um, what you think and what I should change. Basically, this module will work first time, I'm pretty sure. Here's the Marble Machine 3 for you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Looking forward to your feedback in the Reddit and see you next week. Ciao.